Hey guys, I've got another distribution review for you today. This is Neon version 5.7.3. And you may have heard of Neon before. Its unique selling point is that it's built on top of the latest long-term support release of Ubuntu, so that means 16.04. But it has an additional repository which keeps the desktop environment, which is KDE, completely up to date. So you've got that very stable foundation of the long-term support release of Ubuntu, but you've got a bleeding edge desktop environment sitting on top of that. So the idea is that, well, you might have some su superficial bugs and errors uh, on the surface, but the actual core of the machine is rock solid. So you can deal with some of the more superficial problems knowing that uh, it shouldn't ever really get to the point where you'd break your system entirely. It's a really nice happy medium between people that need stability and enjoy uh, bleeding edge software. This is a distribution almost imagined by the folks at KDE. Uh, uh, and you can tell this because the actual website where you get it from is um, neon.kde.org. So I really like this idea. I like the idea of a desktop environment actually building a distribution to actually showcase what it can do. So I'm just going to scroll down and give you uh, a little uh, bit of a preview of the website. This particular installation, of course, as usual, is in a virtual machine. So please don't sort of be too sort of uh, critical of the distribution uh, when it comes to its performance because of course uh, some things are faster in a virtual machine some things are slower uh, but I have installed it and this is the uh, the default layout this is this is all the settings and all the default settings uh, that you can expect once you install from their live CD so um, it is it's just a vanilla KDE uh, desktop environment on top of a long-term support Ubuntu and there's really not much more to say than that. There's really not much more to show you uh, other than what you can expect from a KDE desktop. There are one or two things that are quite interesting and unique about it. Uh, but essentially, if you're familiar with Ubuntu, you're familiar with KDE, you know, it's it's just basically it's the KDE edition of, of Ubuntu, but with a more up-to-date desktop environment. So um, it comes with the KDE framework 5.24.0, uh, Qt 5.0. 7.0. Uh, this is all likely to be out of date not too long after this video is going to go up because of course they like to stay on the bleeding edge. All the system settings are what you'd expect them to be. They're all there as with any other KDE desktop environment. Very nice, very laid out. All the appearance options are very user friendly and also at the same time very customizable. Um, the only, of course, drawback with KDE, generally speaking, is that it is a little heavier on system resources. But there's a lot you can do to actually slim down um, how the, the amount of system resources that it uses. So you've got options like workspace themes, and if you get rid of some of these uh, fading effects and uh, some of these, you know, fancy effects, you you can actually actually save quite a lot of system resources. In fact, you can actually switch out the KDE window manager with perhaps something like Openbox just for, for even more speed. But if you are looking at, at getting a really lightweight distribution, this is probably not your best option. This is for something if you want a little bit of flash, if you want something to show off, then um, and, and you want something that's a bit newer, a bit, uh, a bit shinier, this very well could be a distribution. Now, the uh, KDE have release have they've brought out releases that have been quite buggy before that have had random crashes and so forth so again you know expect this with um with the reliability that we've come to expect from kde but uh i have trialed this out now for for a good number of sessions in a virtual machine over the course of a couple of weeks and i've got to say there has been there have been one or two crashes, but the uh, the way that the crashes are handled make it very easy to restart the application and even if necessary file a bug report. So it's got a lot of its bases covered here, and I think people looking at um, newer software and people looking at the the concept of Neon really probably already know what to expect. I wouldn't introduce this to a uh, a newbie to Linux because the nuance of having a a bleeding edge a desktop operating a desktop environment on top of a stable long-term support uh, operating system is going to be lost on a lot of people newer to Linux. So this is this the the universal selling point uh, or the unique selling point rather of uh, KDE Neon is is really um, one that, that intermediate to advanced users would appreciate more.
but it of course is very very user friendly uh, the install the installation process is although very similar to the um, stock Ubuntu installation process seems to just be a little bit smoother a little bit more uh, easier to deal with a, li a little more information but um, but other than that, you can really expect the same thing, and there's there's nothing to really criticize there. The partition manager, of course, was was easy as it is with other Ubuntu-based uh, installers as well. The one thing that I there are two things that I, I'm going to point out. One is the default choice of uh, browsers. Yeah, it's very interesting that they used a GTK-based browser, Firefox, as their flagship browser, as the browser that they um, choose to include with their bundle. You'd expect them to have something like Conqueror. So um, I'm not entirely sure what made them decide. Maybe it's just because Firefox is a well-known browser, and and maybe they were just more comfortable going with 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 a with a well-known browser over over Conqueror. But Conqueror is a solid browser. Uh, it might not have as many features as as Mozilla Firefox, and it certainly doesn't have as many add-ons. But it's it certainly got its place, and it might have been a good place to showcase the the Conqueror browser. And the second thing, which is also quite interesting is Discover. I've not seen this bundled with another distribution before, uh, but I'm assuming that it's effectively the... Yeah, so it's basically the Plasma software manager, basically a, 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 a Qt or Qt-based um, software center. Very useful, very user-friendly, and also allows you to leave reviews. So... Uh, so that's uh, that's really useful as well. I'm not going to sort of delve too too much into Discover because it does seem to be a little bit sluggish uh, in a virtual machine. But it's yeah, it's very user friendly, um, very straightforward. You update through it as well. So uh, that's a that's a big bonus there. Um, it doesn't come with that many pre-installed applications, which I generally am quite happy to see, uh, especially when it comes to non-user-friendly based um, distributions. Or uh, non-user-friendly is, is probably the not is not the correct term, but ones designed for people that are more familiar. You know, distributions that are designed for people more familiar with Linux. I, I'm I'm more than happy for them to have a minimal amount of software pre-installed, just simply because an intermediate Linux user is going to sort of already have a workflow. Uh, established and they're probably going to be quite comfortable with just installing the software and, and you know choosing the software uh, that they'd like to go with. Um, they could have installed, um, I think it's Caligra, uh, which is the KDE-based Office environment. They don't have any Office environment installed, which again is fine because a lot of people are using things like uh, Google Docs these days. Um, own cloud or next cloud, uh, and of course there's um, what is it Outlook three six five or Office three six whatever Microsoft are, are doing these days. So um, so you know with so many cloud uh, options on the Office, and especially nowadays when you have to give documents, you know you, you have to pass documents off to other people, and even um, sharing .doc files among people with different uh, varying different versions of Windows and on various different versions of Microsoft Word has presented problems in the past for me. So uh, cloud office suites, you know, obviously they have their, their issues with privacy and, um, and uh, of course, most of them are, are non-free, they're proprietary software. There are some significant advantages with being able to have a central place that you can work on a document, and it seems to be an idea that's definitely catching on. So that's really all I've got to say about it. If you want an up-to-date version of KDE or Plasma on a on a desktop environment that looks really nice, you know, the, I love the the breezy theme. You can't go wrong with the breezy theme. Uh, I'm almost certain you can. Uh, yep, yeah, breezy dark. There you go. I, I I'm I'm a big fan of the dark themes. But that's really it. That's all you need to know. So um, if you are interested in having a bleeding edge desktop environment on top of a rock solid stable base, if you can call 1604 stable, um, then this could very well be the distribution for you. If you are looking for something perhaps on a par with the KDE version of Manjaro, but are not a fan with the Manjaro base, then this could very well be an option for you. So uh, that's pretty much all I've got to say on uh, this distribution. It certainly looks promising, certainly um, one that I'm going to be keeping my eye on, and if you are a KDE or, shall I say, Plasma fanatic, this could very well be the one for you. So, that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and uh, you've been awesome. Toodaloo.